Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I thought that I would come today and show you something that you can make with actual trash. I've been in the process of cutting up some of my fabric stash into two and a half inch strips, and so these are some of the square up pieces where most of them were too small to be used for string quilts. So I am going to use that. And then I also had a lot of thread because I was making a chart, a stitch chart of my variegated thread so that I could see how they look. And this is the thread that I had to pull through when I was changing thread color. So I thought that I would use that as well. Some other things that you're going to need for this project is a rotary mat, which we have down. A rotary cutter. You don't necessarily need to use a ruler, but if you want to use a ruler, you can use a ruler. You're going to need something that you can use as a mold, and I'm going to mold this bowl. And then I'm also going to use something that I can put warm water in so that I can rinse out my stabilizer. <clears throat> and the stabilizer that I'm using is water soluble stabilizer. And when I'm doing this particular technique, I like to use the plastic-based water-soluble stabilizer, not the fabric type. And that's because it needs to hold up to the stitches and the fabric kind kind of starts to tear when it's stretched a lot. And I'm actually using the Silky brand of Ultra Solvy Extremely Stable Water-Soluble Stabilizer. And I like to just keep it in a plastic bag so that it doesn't dry out. It's one of those products that if you don't keep it in a bag, it will dry out. And then the final thing you're going to need, you're going to need to have some plastic drop cloths. You can use a trash bag, but I just like to use the recycle bags that come from my local grocery store. Look at what we're going to make. We're going to make something that looks like this. It's actually a little bowl that I made where I molded it over a previous bowl. So I am going to move the things out of my area and we're going to get started. The first step of our process is to take our fibers and we could leave them big like this if we wanted big chunks of fabric. But I kind of like them when they're just little pieces so I just like to just run my rotary cutter through and make my pieces a little bit smaller and you don't have to worry about what size they are you're just making crumbs with your pieces I got pretty good crumbs here and they don't all have to be the same size and if you want more of a particular color that's looking pretty dark so I'm going to go in here and pull out red orange and pink maybe brighten it up a little bit So that made the pile a little bit brighter.
And like I said, they don't all have to be the same size. So I'm going to stop right there. If that's not enough, then I can come back and add some more. And then with my thread, I'll just cut these into little larger sections, but I'm not going to cut them down because I can spread the threads a little bit. So that's enough cutting of the threads. Now the next step is I need to take a piece of water soluble stabilizer that I am going to use as a base. And I've already put that onto my long arm machine. So I am going to take the camera around, but let me pick up some of these pieces so that I can transport them over to the other side of the machine. Now loaded on my leaders, I have my water soluble stabilizer and I'm going to get my fibers. <laughs> and I basically just want to spread these fibers onto this stabilizer. And then I want to take my thread pieces and just kind of spread those around so that I'm evenly distributing the colors and the variegated yarns as well. So I need another piece of stabilizer to go over the top. So I'll just lay it up here and rough cut a piece. Now if I was doing this on a home machine, I would make sure that everything was pinned down so that as I'm moving, I wouldn't lose my fibers. But since I'm on my long arm, I am just going to go ahead and start stitching around the outside to hold my pieces together. So I'm just spreading out a little bit. And then place this on top. <clears throat> now in my long arm, I am using some thread that is YLI's poly thread and it actually glows with a black light and I thought that would be interesting. I'm using an I'm actually using neon yellow. So it's going to be bright and it's going to be something that will show up under black light. But I just want to play with this thread. So let me first just lock my stitches. Okay. So, now what I want to do is I want to baste around the outside edge so that I don't lose my fibers as I'm quilting. So now I have a basic grid and I'm kind of stitching to the side because I'm using my camera 
that's not on the machine so let me lower this down see if that helps and there we go so now what I want to do is I want to stitch a grid and it doesn't have to be a pretty grid we just want to hold down our fibers don't have to be straight lines we're just gonna go and stitch a grid and we can come back and put things in the middle but we're trying to keep things from shifting around too much that's in our middle Okay, so I have done all of my horizontal lines. Now I'm going to go back and do some vertical lines. with my grid and let me just tilt it up to make sure you can see exactly what I have and now I have a grid that if I were to rinse this out I would have big gaping holes you can see areas where like right here I don't even have fabric scraps and I'm not sure if I'm going to need that spot or not but these this is just a grid so anything that's not actually under a piece of this thread that I've just stitched will fall out so now what we want to do is lock this grid in and so we're just now going to go and do a whole lot of tiny circles overlapping loops to hold this grid in place so now I'm just going to go ahead and start the circling and I guess I'll have to try to use one hand because if I put the other one up there it's blocking And I'm overlapping my circle so that they are intertwined threads. And this will take me a very long time to do this. I'll get a time for you so I'll know how long this takes and I'll just feed you forward through some of it I may still have to skip but we'll see
I have done about eight minutes of stitching and I just wanted you to see the difference now that I have the yellow neon thread going through it so I'm estimating that I'm about a third done so let's just say that this will take in half an hour so I will go ahead and complete this step and I will come back in a bit I'm back and I have you at an angle I have the entire thing completed what you can't see is that I've taken an air soluble pen and I've kind of drawn a circle inside I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to see it too much but there is part of it right here and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just trying to get a circle since I'm using the bowl as my shape another thing that I have done is I have changed my top thread to orange just so I can see it and I am now going to stitch around this circle about three times and then I'm going to do a little zigzag stitch around it so I'm just blocking off my locking off my stitches here and now I'm just going to try to follow this circle and again it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just looking for an eyeball shape just so I have some general idea and then I'm going to go around that a two or three times maybe even four and I'm not worried about if they're on top of each other because when I do my little zigzag it will connect all of these stitches that I'm going around with so this is just something that I like to do when I just want to do some mindless playing you can make your own fabric for art quilts. If I didn't put this circle in here, I could have used this entire rectangle as a background. And I'm going to go around one more time. This is my fourth time. And then I'm going to come back and just do little loopies or zigzags over the stitching that I have here. So I can, I can do loopies around it to make sure everything's tight. So now I'm completely done and you can see my kind of oblong circle shape there and now I am going to remove it from my machine and we'll go to the next step. So I'm back with my finished piece and I just thought I'd show it to you off the frame and then this is how it looks on the wrong side because I didn't change the yellow thread on the back side so you still kind of see the circle going around. So the next step is to cut out around the circle and I don't want to cut my orange threads because I want to keep that as a decorative edge. Okay. So this is now my shape and I am going to rinse these pieces out and I will be using these. I'll save them to use in an art quilt. The next thing we need is a bowl of water and the thing with water soluble stabilizer is you want to rinse it out on this particular project but not rinse it completely out and that's why I like using a bowl because I can control and then if I go too far my bowl has the substance from the water soluble so I'm just going to push it into the bowl and I want it to get out I don't want it to be sticky you want to take it out when it's not sticky anymore and if you're using a bowl and you can't use the same water because it's too sticky then you can change your water out at that point but for right now I like to try to control my water instead of just doing it straight down the sink so we still got some spaces where it's a little sticky 
And so I just want to rinse out the sticky. And we're just about there. Okay. And now we can wring it out. And when I wring it out, it shouldn't be anything sticky when I wring it out. And so now the next step is I want to move in my mold set up so I'm now going to use this bag with this bowl and I am going to have to find something to lift this bowl up with so I have this CD holder and I'm just going to prop my bowl up on top of that because when I put my mold on top I don't want it to I don't want this to be flat onto my tabletop surface because we're going to be using that to keep it so that the bottoms don't fall down. And so I'm just trying to now look and see if I got it sort of kind of centered. So now that I have my bowl sitting on top and it could move, it could dry so that my base is not quite centered. And so what I want to do is secure it onto my base. And the easiest way to do that is to use some saran wrap because you don't want anything that's going to stick and not pull off because you still have stabilizer on this. So I want to keep it flat. Keep it as flat as I can and then pull the saran wrap tight and then wrap it back on itself and that will keep it from moving as it's drying. This will sit overnight and then I will come back and show you the finished project. I'm back and my bowl has been sitting overnight and I did wrap a second layer of saran wrap around the bottom just to keep those ends from fraying out. And I'm not sure if it's dry, I'm just checking it and I wanted to make sure that I tell you to add a second layer of saran wrap. So that's really why I'm back. But I thought I would check it just in case. So your bowl could be stuck to the base because it's, um, you know, got some of the stabilizer still in it. So I'm going to try to see if I can take it off. It feels like it's just very slightly damp on the outside. So I'm trying to get the bowl out so that I can let it dry on the inside completely. And so it just takes a little bit to break the seal. And then once I want to leave that saran wrap on though. So, and there we go. So this is how my kitchen bowl that I used has operated. And so it actually feels pretty dry, but I'm going to let it sit a little bit more before I take the saran wrap off and make sure that it's completely dry because I don't want to lose my shaping because I got a lot of folds right here. So I will let it continue to dry and then I'll come back when it's completed. My bowl has completed drying and I can now remove all of the saran wrap. So take that part off 
And this one I kind of tied on a little bit. So I may have to squash my bowl a little bit. And I like using either saran wrap or plastic bag because anything that has a fiber may attach itself to your bowl. So you have this little little cattywampus piece of art, but it is very usable. So one of the things that I do is I start looking inside to see if I got any strings that didn't get caught in a stitching. And I have this one long stem here. So I'm just going to reach inside and cut that off. And I did go ahead and wash the salvi away from these pieces here. And if I wanted to, I could also use these as some decorative elements on the outside to just give it a little bit more detail. And I want to show you how the orange looks around the rim when I heavily stitch that orange in. So that is technically our project today. I will be talking about using some of this stuff in another video. I want to use it in a particular place and don't want to go into it right now. But I did say that this thread... So I'm going to actually show you on the long arm. I've cut off all of my overhead lights. And this is my regular sewing machine light here. So you can see what it looks like. And then I have a button that I can turn and make it a black light. So let me switch it. And now you can see how that thread really glows up. So that is the thread. And I happen to have some navy thread here just so you can see the difference. I know it's a darker thread, but it really is one of those threads that kind of glow in black light. Not necessarily in the dark but in black light so you can see it from the inside there I'm going to cut it off so you can see it again looks completely different just letting you look at the bowl right here kinda looks like it's cottage cheese in this area here and that's because that's where no fabric or thread fibers we're added. That's just the stitching that I added on top with the quilting. See if I can get that closer for you where you can see this little hole. So I have various of those little holes going around the bowl. And then I do have a few pleats up at the top edge from where I secured my saran wrap. But that's just something else that you can do with some fibers. And I thought that I would share that with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.